Hi everyone, my name is Cristiano Garcia and today I'm going to present this paper entitled Incremental Missing Data Imputation for Evolving Fuzzy Granular Prediction. This paper was developed together with the professors Daniel Leite and Igor Strantz and it was already accepted for publishing in IEEE transactions on fuzzy system. So that's the outline for today. First we'll see uh, introduction, later we'll see the objectives of this work, after we'll see the algorithm of EFTP, later we see the results in discussion, and at the end a conclusion will be provided. So let's go for introduction. Our society is experiencing a, a huge growth of the amount of information. Uh, data are being uh, produced not only by people anymore, but also by systems. And to take advantage from this data, we have data mining and machine learning methods that can be applied in several situations such as uh, classification, clustering, regression, and so on. But real data may have missing values, meaning that incomplete inputs will need to be removed or treated before being used in the machine learning method. And this treatment is called missing data imputation. EFTP, our method, is able to handle missing data in non-stationary environments, which are very different from offline environments in the following constraints. Data arrive constantly, so we cannot have the whole data at once. Data may be infinite, and therefore data should be processed and discarded right after. Other issues that data may suffer concept change, that is, the data may change its distribution over time. And all these constraints must be respected. So the objectives of this work were to present a method able to handle MAR and MCAR type, single and multiple missing data in non-stationary data streams and of course to output a prediction in spite of missing data. But first, what are MCAR and MAR type missing data? So MCAR stands for missing completely at random. The propensity for a value to be missing is completely random, so all the attributes have the same chance to be missing. And we have MAR, which stands for missing at random, where the propensity for a specific attribute to be missing is higher than those of other attributes. So if a sensor is not working properly, this sensor is more propensed to provide missing values. So let's go for EFTP. EFTP, Evolving Fuzzy Granular Predictor, was first proposed in references number one and two. It compresses data streams into few granules, reflecting the data structure and the data behavior. It provides granular and pointwise prediction. But how EFTP can handle missing data? EFTP can handle missing data by developing additional reduced term functions in case of single missing data. So here we have uh, an example of a rule. We have the antecedent part from x1 to xn and we have the consequent part. This linguistic and, or granular output and we have the pointwise prediction. And for example, if x2 is missing and this rule is activated, it will provide a granular prediction with this linguistic output in a pointwise prediction using a reduced term function that, uh, that was developed without taking x2 into consideration. So uh, the pointwise prediction will be provided by a function like that, which will be a function that never considered x2. And if we have multiple missing data, we make the real imputation by the center of the membership function. Here we have the EFTP algorithm. Uh, we have uh, here uh, a membership, a trapezoidal membership function, and we have the, the rule here just for reference. And the, the first line we have uh, this definition uh, rho, sigma, and HR. Uh, rho uh, controls how much this membership function, this granule, can expand. So you can see rho here and here, and actually rho goes from this, this point to this other point. So it defines how big can be this granule. Uh, sigma plays the, the same role, but only for output granules. And we have here the, the reading of the data stream. Here uh, from line number four, we try to make a prediction. If uh, the number of missing data, of missing values in this input is, is equal to zero, and we give a prediction using complete functions. So 
we give this, this uh, prediction use this function else if the number of uh, missing values is equal one so we use one of these uh, reducer term functions and if we have uh, more than the one missing value we choose the most active rule for this input so we use here the the concept of partial similarity and here we play the multiple imputation use the midpoints midpoint is this value here of the most active granule for xh here uh, we play the multiple imputation using the midpoints of the most active granule so midpoint is this point here it's in the center of the granule and after the real imputation our input is now complete so we use the complete function to give a prediction from line 14 on we provide the granular prediction so we use this linguistic output from line 16 on we check if the input can be accommodated in a granule and the output can be accommodated in a granule so if one of them cannot we create a rule to accommodate both and uh, on the other hand if we already have a granule to accommodate this this pair input output we just adapt them the most active granule we adapt these parameters here so we expand or contract the granule and we adapt the consequent coefficients we can see in the paper that function p and function q they have their coefficients and these coefficients uh, need to be adapted after that we delete the sample and here we check if age is uh, multiple of hr so hr is a number that controls how frequent the algorithm deletes inactive rules and merge neighbor granules in order to keep the model compactness so if age age is like uh, the sequence of the data stream if age is a multiple of hr we delete inactive granules and rules and we merge neighbor granules so let's go for results and discussion. In our paper, we use these three data sets, but uh, I'm going to show it on the results with the first data set. This depth value weather data set, uh, which corresponds to the monthly mean temperatures between 1901 and 2009. We simulated MCAR and MAR type missing data situations to test the method. With MCAR, we varied from 1% to 30%. It means that equally all the attributes have the same propensity to be missing. With MAR, we varied using these pairs of values. For example, here we have uh, 5% to 1%, which means that uh, a specific random attribute would have 5% to be missing, of chance to be missing while the others would have one percent of chance to be missing. We evaluated our method using RMSC and in the index and we compared our method to EGNN reference number three, ETS reference number four, XTS reference number five and FB reference number two. Since those methods uh, with the exception of uh, EFTP of course cannot handle missing data we took the less valid prediction in case of missing data. That's the results for MCAR so we can see as the percentage of MCAR type missing data increases ETS, XTS, EGNN and FB had their errors increased in terms of RMSC. On the other hand we had the FTP keeping errors almost unchanged growing only from 15% on so we can see here from this point to this point we have a, a little increase but it is still very low compared to the other method here we have the results for MAR so here we can see that uh, as the percentage of MAR type missing data increases ETS, STS, EGNN and FB had their errors also increased in terms of RMSC and we can highlight here that EFTP kept the same level of errors in terms of RMSC throughout the values previously defined for MAR missing data in the conclusion we presented EFTP we showed that our method is able to handle MCAR and MAR missing data types we got extensive experimental results using real data sets and the results were 
statistically significant compared to the other methods. So the reference of the slides, we use these references here to reference this paper. Please cite similar to that. And thanks for watching.